be careful, this is all loose line. There's loose line in the cockpit. the cockpit with the road forward, I'll get you completely clear forward. It was obvious to us that the weather forecast was wrong because it was so settled. No big gusts as predicted, but we were cautious enough to hoist the sail with one reef in it. As we moved up toward Belfast Loch, the winds picked up and we decided we needed a second reef in the main sail, so we heaved to and we shortened sail. reef in the uh, in the main. I just need to trim it better than it is but oh, that's made it a lot more bearable hasn't it? Yeah the speed's come down to 4.7 knots. Yeah but I've still got to trim the main. I know you'll get a better uh, thing if you uh, bring it in a bit. Yeah. There it's just set now. Oh. The wind just gusted up to 23. Whoa! And Beverly's going to have to <laughs> I'm just going to hand steer, Bev. Okay, fair days. This is ruining my tea break. Uh, careful, we're, we're going left. I know, sorry. It's because you were uh, looking somewhere else. That looks about right. What do you think? Yeah. What's our wind speed? Uh, 25.6. <laughs> uh, we're getting white caps um, on the sea. Um, and. Um, we're both very happy about the decision to go into Ranga. <laughs> <laughs> oh, adventurers we are not. <laughs> oh, we are. I but know. We like to enjoy the sailing. I know. This is endurance. <laughs> this is endurance, but if nothing else, I'm uh, improving my helm skills, where Beverly is definitely improving her shooting skills. Absolutely. Twenty-nine knots. Yeah. Good God. With the, um, the wind gusting like this, we never use the autopilot because uh, she likes steady state wind rather than gusts. Well, even commercial pilots and things like that turn the autopilots off in rough weather. 
Yeah. In fact, exactly. sometimes the autopilots turn themselves off. Yeah, exactly. in Bangor uh, because although Beverly doesn't believe the absolute detail of uh, weather forecasts we do believe that um, they get the generalities right and although it was absolutely calm in Abercorn Basin um, as we came down the lock um, the weather just deteriorated I started getting white caps um, but also the wind direction was um, from the south um, and the southeast and that's the direction we want to go. We would have had a wind over tide situation and out there. So we would have had a wind over tide. Now Belfast Lock is quite sheltered so we didn't have very much, um, you know the sea state was smooth um, but it's just so bitter. I had my mullions on and I was still cold. The canopy though did keep Beverly reasonably warm in just salopettes. So we've arrived and uh, as you can see in this particular video there was a lot of going backwards wasn't there? There was a lot of going astern and... Um... Oh sorry yes. <clears throat> as you can see there was a lot of uh, going astern. Sorry salty nautical stuff. Carry on. There was a lot going astern and that was one of the only questions from the viewer questions of the week of the winter that we didn't address. Mm. So um, the viewer wanted some hints and tips on going astern. So my hints and tips are... Ah, hold on. Before we go there, I'm just going to throw in some qualifiers. Okay. Firstly, we're talking about this boat. This is where our experience is. This boat has a fin keel and a spade rudder. That means it goes backwards fairly well actually. Not as good as it goes forwards, but it goes backwards pretty well. It's quite steerable. If you have a long keel or you have a skeg rudder, it might be different for you. And my advice to anybody would be, wait for a lovely calm day outside the marina. Take your boat out to sea and just sit out there for an hour or two, going backwards, and find out how your boat reacts. Try out different power configurations. Play with your tiller or rudder, just see how it reacts. Now with all that, we're going to talk about our experience of reversing. Over to you. Okay, so my first top tip is to spring as much as possible. Um, if you can start your turn uh, while you're still in the slip, fantastic. Oh yeah, the less turning you have to do, the better. Mm. Um, we found that using half rudder uh, is actually better than a full rudder because we found that the full rudder actually can be used as a brake. Okay, advanced computer graphics time. Okay. If we're going toward you, and this is the rudder of the boat coming toward you, as you can see, it doesn't meet much resistance from the water. If we put a half rudder on, it'll be enough to start turning the boat that way. But if we put full rudder on, this is going sideways through the water. It gives a lot of resistance and it doesn't actually help the boat turn any. So by putting a small amount to turn on to get the boat start moving over you can then increase this as you go that's advanced computer graphics with a coaster <laughs> right definitely the salty last way <laughs> okay um one of the things that i find is that you do have to use the power quite a bit um to get the boat moving go on put on power set it yourself you Um, especially um, against wind, tide and all the other components. Um, I also find it easier if I face the way that I'm going. Um, especially with a, a wheel, 
you know, I'm just turning it the way I want to go rather than having to swap it in my head. Mm -hmm. And then lastly, don't panic. Going the wrong way, Bev. Pardon? I'm doing the wrong thing. Um... Uh, the boats move slowly. You will have time, but just make sure that you are in control and not the wind and the tide. Uh, our plan here: we're sitting out weather in Bangor at the minute. And we've got one or two other things to do, which is going to delay us a day or two. Mm. So we've drawn up our passage plan to get us into Strangford. Now, what the passage plan has on it, it has various times, like when the Irish Sea tide reverses, when Copeland Sound starts working, when Strangford Narrows starts working. And there is an overlap uh, between Copeland Sound, which is, there's an overlap between Copeland Sound, which is this, and Strangford Narrows, which is this. So we can go in to Copeland, and as long as we get the Strangford by here, we can go into Strangford. The problem is, looking at these dates and times and tides, we've only got to Tuesday. Mm. Tuesday is the last day for us to go into Strangford because after Tuesday, it'll be dark when we arrive at the Narrows and we really don't want to go in in the dark. Now, it just depends because Beverly's got some work, which is always nice. We mm. like to pay for things. So it just depends on how long it will take Beverly to do her work. <laughs> That's true. So. We've, we've got our passage plan marked out. We know what tidal assist we're going to get from the Irish Sea. We know what time we can depart here at. We know what time we must arrive at. And it's Sunday, Monday or Tuesday. If we go on Wednesday, we can't go into Strangford. It's that simple. Yeah. So let's, let's see hope, what happens. Let's hope that maybe you can get this work done quick. It is what it is. Passage down the Irish Sea is uh, rather dull. Um, we went through the Copelands, Beverly on the helm this time, and that was super duper dull. But I have to say, it is an area that you don't want it particularly interesting, shall we say. There was one uh, boy that Beverly thought uh, was uh, getting too close, but it turned out to be a. What bird did it turn out to be, Bev? Pardon? What bird did it turn out to be? An eider duck. Oh yeah. It turned out to be an eider duck. Um, and um, some little thing that we thought was nothing, that was actually um, an orange boy very low down. So you do have to be careful with your fish pots. But other than that, it was very dull. Um, but what we find uh, on Salty Lass and I'm going to have to leave you because um, the sail <laughs> is starting to flog. See you in a bit. Change of wind direction. Yeah. Not half. that Beverly and I uh, find is that um, we can put the sail up at um, uh, anything up to 20 degrees this is the main sail and although obviously you're not sailing sailing uh, we normally get about a knot maybe a knot and a half um, assist out of the sail so um, as I said the you know, the other thing that we were thinking about was tacking, but the course made good uh, just wasn't going to be worth it. You'd be doing an awful lot of tacks um, to get where we were going. So we've gone for the motor sail and just um, sailing incredibly close to the wind.